Okay, welcome to a brief explanation of acid-base extraction and exactly how it is that changing the pH of an aqueous layer can have such a profound effect on a liquid-liquid extraction experiment. We'll begin with our usual question. Uh, and this week the question is, how does the pH of the aqueous layer affect the partitioning coefficient of a titratable organic compound? And to be more specific, uh, and to give a good explanation, we're going to use an actual organic compound this time, rather than a cartoon sphere square triangle. This week we'll be looking at a compound called 2-naphthol, which is pictured below, and also its conjugate base, 2-naphthalate. And this would be the ion which is generated when the acidic proton is removed uh, from the phenolic site on this molecule. But before we get into the details of how naphthol will behave, let's take a general look at how organic compounds, and in fact any compound with the uh, acidic hydrogen, uh, can behave and how its behavior can be predicted. In order to do this, we're going to have to go back and look at one of our old friends from general chemistry, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. You'll recall from your general chemistry course that for any monoprotic acid which can dissociate into a hydrogen ion and its conjugate base, there is an equilibrium constant associated with this process. And we write this usually as K sub A, setting it equal to H plus concentration times A minus concentration, where that's the conjugate base, divided by the HA concentration, where this is the intact unionized acid molecule. We need to begin rearranging this equation a bit uh, to uh, give us the Henderson-Hasselbalch. And to start, what we do is divide both sides of this equality by the proton concentration. So in doing so, we maintain equality, but we've given ourselves the ability to cancel out the H plus concentration on the right-hand side. Next, we take the negative logarithm of both sides of this equation. Now, this may look awfully complex, but at the end of this, it will distill down nicely to a very simple, very useful relationship. Recall that you can take the log of one number over the other and set that equal to the log of that number minus the log of the other. So this is in fact what we'll do to the left-hand side of the equation. This gives us minus the log of Ka minus minus the log of H plus. Again, this may appear a bit unwieldy at the moment, but we'll see in, in just a minute here that it's actually a very useful way to, uh, to portray this equation. And for the moment, I'm going to leave the right-hand side of the equation intact without doing any more rearrangement. Now, if you pause for a moment and look at this equation carefully, you'll notice some familiar equalities here. For example, negative log of k. We know what this is. This is the expression for the pKa of a compound or of a reaction. Negative log h plus. This is the equation for the pH of a particular solution. So we can substitute these values into this equation, simplifying it dramatically. Again, the pK is simply the negative log of K, pH the negative log of H+. Plus. And again, we'll leave the right-hand side intact because it already has in it what is of interest to us the most, and that is the ratio of concentrations between the acid and its conjugate base. This is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation tells us that the ratio of acid to conjugate base in any aqueous solution for a monoprotic acid is determined by the difference between the pH of that compound, uh, of, excuse me, the pH of that solution and the pKa of the acid. So let's take a look at how this can affect the partitioning behavior when one of the two phases into which our sample can move is in fact aqueous. Shown in this slide are 2-naphthol and its conjugate base 2-naphthalate. And recall again that this is uh, an ionizable compound and that it is simply an acid-base equilibrium which we can model using a pKa of about 10. If we were to plot the Henderson-Hasselbalch for this equation, but instead of plotting the ratio of naphthalate to naphthol, we simply use relative partitioning coefficient in the uh, y-axis of our diagram, 
we get the diagram that's shown in the bottom left of the slide. And what you notice, no doubt, is that there's a very steep transition within this diagram, and that it happens right at the pKa of our compound. This is true because at the pKa, based upon the henderson hasselbalch equation, when pH is equal to pKa, we anticipate to have 50% naphthol ionized and 50% naphthol unionized in our aqueous solution. But for now, what we want to do is concentrate on the extremes. And that's because, usually during an extraction, it's our goal to either have our compound accumulate as much as possible in the aqueous layer or as little as possible in the aqueous layer. So I've highlighted the region of this plot in which we have uh, a non-optimized partitioning coefficient. So this is the type of pH that we want to avoid having in our aqueous layer, and we'll see why in just a moment. So first, let's take a look a little bit closer at what's going on inside of our separatory funnel. If, for example, we have an ether solution of our compound over an aqueous extraction mixture. Let's begin by using our extraction mixture at pH 6, as indicated by the bullseye on the diagram. If we were to place an organic solution, let's say ether in this case, of our compound, how would this compound behave generally? Well, the, uh, the two naphthol has two options. One is to stay dissolved in the organic layer as a neutral compound, and the other is to partition into the aqueous layer, also as a neutral compound, as we've determined using the henderson hasselbalch equation. Based on our calculations, an aqueous layer of pH 6 should contain about 10,000 unionized naphthols for every one ionized naphthalate. What this means is that a very small amount may partition into the water, but that it is not optimized. So if it were our goal during this extraction to move our naphthol out of the organic layer, this would be a very poor choice. If, on the other hand, it was necessary for us to leave as much naphthol as possible in the organic layer, this may be the correct or a good choice of aqueous layer pH. Now let's take a look at what happens if instead we change the pH of our aqueous layer to about 10. When we change the pH of the aqueous layer to about 10, what we notice is that we are on a region of the henderson hasselbalch plot where the ratio of ionized to unionized naphthol is changing. And in fact, at the pH equal to the pKa, that ratio is 50-50. What this means is that some of those dissolved naphthol molecules will ionize, making room for additional naphthol to partition in. Some of this naphthol is expected to ionize, and some of it is not. And ultimately, we will have a solution which will contain uh, somewhat more naphthol, but not the greatest amount of naphthol possible dissolved. This is why we typically avoid using aqueous extraction layers of pHs that are near the pKa of the compounds of interest. At this point, our cartoon diagram has approximately equal concentrations of naphthol in either layer. So we'll call this Kp of about 1. Finally, let's move to pH 14. When we move to pH 14, we have completely traversed the transition within the henderson hasselbalch plot. And therefore, we are now in a region where nearly all of the, the dissolved aqueous naphthol will actually be present as naphthalate. And you can probably guess, based on what you've learned in general chemistry, that naphthalate will have a much higher solubility overall in water than will naphthol by virtue of the fact that it has a charged group and can establish ion dipole forces with the water. So if we continue our animation, what we see is only naphthalate is dissolved in the water now. All the naphthol in there is deprotonated, but that it can hold even more. And so we see an even greater amount partitioning in. And in our cartoon example, we've now established three times the concentration in the aqueous layer as we have in the organic layer. So we would call this Kp of about one-third. The consequence here is very clear, that we can alter the pH of the aqueous layer in order to coax this molecule to concentrate in either layer, depending upon well, which one serves our purposes best. If it's our goal to extract as much naphthol as possible into the water, we would want to use an aqueous layer with a pH of at least 12. 
if instead we wanted to leave as much naphthol as possible in the organic layer, for example while we're extracting a different compound, we would want to use an aqueous layer pH of no greater than 8 to avoid the region of the Henderson-Hasselbach plot uh, wherein that transition occurs. And this is the logic behind selecting the proper aqueous layer in a liquid-liquid extraction.